So there are certain kinds of problems that usually come in competitive exams which deal with the velocity, acceleration and path of motion. So one kind of a problem uh, can be such that you are given an equation for the path of motion of some particle or system of particles and you are required to find let's suppose the components of the velocity the components of the acceleration right on the other hand the other kind of problem would be that you are given the velocities and the accelerations but you are required to find an equation for the path of motion now there are um, some simple tricks to solve problems of both these two nature and that is what i'm going to do in this video so let's look at the first problem so this is a question that came in net examination in 2015 it goes like this a particle moves in two dimensions on an ellipse x square plus 4y square is equal to 8 at a particular instant it is at a point which is given by 2 1 and the x component of velocity is 6 meter per second what is the y component of velocity this is a very straightforward and a simple problem okay uh, so you are basically given the path of motion or the equation associated with the path of motion which is x square plus 4y square is equal to 8. If you are given the equation associated with the path of motion and you are required to find let's suppose the velocities or the accelerations, it is quite easy if you understand that the velocity is nothing but the time derivative of the x y z components or the position vector all right so the velocity components are the time derivative of the position vector components and acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity vector components so of course this is in cartesian coordinate frame because you are dealing with x and y coordinates so this is the path of motion so to obtain the velocity uh, components what you need to do is simply do a time derivative of the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation so if you do basically a differentiation of the path of motion then what do you get so the time derivative of x square is nothing but twice x x dot plus time derivative of 4 y square is nothing but 4 into 2 8 y y dot under time derivative of 8 is nothing but 0 here what do x dot mean x dot simply signifies dx upon dt and y dot simply signifies dy upon dt by the way dx upon dt is nothing but the velocity component in the x-axis and y dot is nothing but the velocity component in the y-axis now this is basically it contains xy as well as vx and vy now we are also given some other quantities so we are given that at point 2 comma 1 uh, what is the x component of velocity the x component of velocity is given by 6 meter per second so they are asking us what is the y component of velocity so it's not very difficult to find from here i just substitute the values that i have been given so if i use this equation so this is let's suppose equation number one so if i use the equation number one 2x x dot plus 8y y dot is equal to 0 then i just substitute the coordinates so 2 into x is what x is nothing but 2 and x dot is already given to us which is nothing but 6 meters per second plus 8 into y y is nothing but 1 and y dot is something that i'm interested in finding out so then i simply end up getting 6 into 2 into 2 12 into 2, 24 plus 8y dot is equal to 0 this simply leads to 8y dot is equal to minus 24 so 8 and 24 this is nothing but 3 or y dot is equal to minus 3 meters per second so y dot is nothing but the velocity component in the y axis so this is just the velocity component in the y axis so if you're given the equation of motion for a particular path and you are interested in the velocity components you just do a time derivative of the equation and from there on you can proceed to obtain the answer to that particular question now a reverse kind of question is also possible where you are given the velocities and accelerations and you require to ask the path of motion so let's look at a problem like that so this is a question in which a particle is moving on an xy plane at time t is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 
and x dot that is the velocity component in x axis is also equal to 0 but y dot that is the velocity component in y axis is equal to beta which is a constant. Now if the particle moves at constant acceleration given by alpha i cap then what is the equation for the path of motion. So in this problem you are given uh, let's suppose um, uh, coordinates and the velocities at a given time period you are required to uh, you are also given the acceleration you are required to find the equation for the path of motion. So what do we do? So we start with the acceleration. So what is the acceleration that is given to us? So the acceleration that is given to us is nothing but uh, alpha i cap. Now it is said that the particle is restricted to the xy plane. So if I write the acceleration in terms of the accelerations along x axis and the acceleration components along y axis then this is nothing but alpha i cap plus 0 j cap right. So if I look at the components along x and y axis then I can say that a x is nothing but equal to alpha which is a constant and a y is nothing but equal to 0. Now I am going to use these two uh, to obtain the path of motion. So let's start with the first. I will come back to a y a little while later. So let's start with a x. Now what is a x? a x is nothing but the acceleration along the x axis. So it can be written as d v x upon d t is equal to alpha right. So this can simply be written as d v x is equal to alpha d t. So if I integrate this equation both sides with respect to t then I can write it in this particular manner. So this is nothing but integration of d v x is nothing but v x which is equal to alpha t plus some kind of a constant c1. Now what is the constant c1? To find out the constants of these kind of indi indefinite integrals I can use some kind of a initial values. Now what is the initial value that is given to us in the problem? It is said that at time t is equal to 0, x dot is equal to 0. So if at time t is equal to 0, x dot means that it is vx, velocity in the x-axis is equal to 0. So if I use this equation, I can say that if I use this equation and put the values up that are given to us, then vx is 0 at time t is equal to 0 plus c1 and this leads to c1 is equal to 0. So this constant is also equal to 0. So if I plug the constant back into this equation, I end up getting vx is equal to alpha t. That's it. This is a solution for the velocity. Now, that itself is not enough. I am interested in the path of motion. So to obtain the x component out of it, what I can do is I can simply do again a similar kind of a formulation. So vx is nothing but dx upon dt, right? So this is equal to alpha t. So I can also do an integration of both these two sides with respect to time. Then I simply get dx is equal to alpha t dt integration. Then this is nothing but x is equal to alpha t square upon 2 plus some kind of a constant c. 2. Again, to obtain the value of the constant, let's suppose C2, I again use initial conditions. Now, what are the initial conditions that are given to us? At time t is equal to 0, it is said in the question that uh, x is also equal to 0. So, if x is equal to 0 at time t is equal to 0, in that case, if I put it back uh, here, so x is 0 at time t is equal to 0 upon 2 plus c2 then this is simply nothing but c2 is also equal to 0. So I plug that back into this equation and I end up getting x is equal to half of alpha t square. So this is the first solution for x okay. Similarly I can also find out the solution for y. So let's remember this here and let's go back to a y is equal to 0. So we can apply the same method to find out y from a y okay so we have what do we have a y is equal to 0 now a y is nothing but time rate of change of d y so this is equal to 0 again I can do an integration of d v y is equal to 0 d t this will simply lead to v y is equal to 0 plus some kind of a constant c 3. Now how do I obtain the value of the constant c 3? Again I use initial conditions at time t is equal to 0 what is given to me in the question? It is given to me that um, v uh, y dot or the v y is beta where beta is a constant. So if I apply this here uh, v y is beta at time t is equal to 0 plus c 3 or c3 is nothing but equal to some kind of a constant beta. So if I plug this back in the equation, I simply get 
vy is equal to beta right okay so i obtain the uh, expression for the velocity again i can use this to obtain the expression for y so for that i'll say that vy is nothing but dy upon dt is equal to beta right again i integrate dy and beta dt in this equation i simply end up getting y is equal to beta t plus some kind of a constant c4 i can uh, find out the constant c4 applying the initial condition so what initial condition i use i use the initial condition given in the question at the time t is equal to 0 y is also equal to 0 so if i apply this then y is equal to 0 at time t is equal to 0 plus c4 or c4 is equal to 0 so i again apply uh, this initial condition result that I obtained back into this equation I end up getting y is equal to beta t so I end up getting the values of uh, x here right and the values of y here of course both are dependent on some time period t if I want to write the equation of motion in terms of x and y then I can simply substitute from I can use uh, let's suppose t is equal to y upon beta right I can use this in x is equal to half alpha t square if i use this in x is equal to half alpha t square is equal to half alpha t square is nothing but y upon beta so square or x is equal to alpha y square upon 2 beta square so this is quite simply put the equation corresponding to the path of motion of the particle where the conditions that were given were the, those conditions in the question. Now let's do another similar question related to finding out the acceleration from the path of motion. So in this question the particle is moving with a constant speed okay not velocity speed of 1 meter per second along a curve y is equal to x square calculate the x and y components of acceleration at this given point 0 0. Now this is a similar question compared to the first question but in the first question we are asked the velocity components here we are asked the acceleration components. So how to do this well first of all we can get an equation of motion which is y is equal to x square but you can also get an equation of motion from this particular statement that the constant speed of 1 meter per second right so this is not a velocity this is speed now uh, what is speed speed is nothing but the uh, magnitude of the instantaneous velocity so if let's suppose that uh, the uh, magnet uh, the components of the instantaneous velocity since i think this is a question related to two dimensional motion so the magnitude of instantaneous velocity are vx and vy then uh, speed is nothing but square root of vx square plus vy square all right so what is the speed speed is nothing but one meter per second all right so let's write vx and vy in terms of x dot square plus y dot square okay so vx is nothing but the time derivative of x so i am writing this as x dot and vy is nothing but the time derivative of y so i am writing this as y dot all right so this will lead to an equation that we can use so one is equal to if i do square of both sides x dot square plus y dot square so this is an equation that can be very very helpful for us so in solving the problem so x dot square plus y dot square is equal to one so let's suppose this is equation number one okay now what can i do with this equation we can do a lot of things but since we are interested in acceleration components let's do a derivative or differentiation of this equation with respect to time why we are doing a differentiation with respect to time because we are also interested in acceleration components so if i do a derivative with respect to time of this particular equation so for d by dt of x dot square is what 2 x dot x double dot so x double dot is simply the acceleration plus 2 y dot y double dot is equal to 0 okay so x double dot is nothing but d 2 x upon d t 2 and y dot double dot is nothing but d 2 y upon d t 2 okay so this is an equation that we end up getting x dot x double dot plus y dot y double dot so as you can see using the statement for the speed okay we were given speed is 1 meter per second we ended up getting this particular equation associated with the motion and then we also do a derivative with respect to time to get this particular equation which is associated with the velocity components and the acceleration components now they are going to be quite helpful to us in solving this particular problem how well let me demonstrate we are also given another equation of motion yes we are also given this right so let's look at this y is equal to y is equal to x square so y is equal to x square simply represents another equation of motion that we have so what can we do with y is equal to x square we, we, we can again do a differentiation with respect to time for both sides 
So if I do differentiation with respect to time, then I end up getting y dot is equal to 2x x dot. Let's suppose that this is point number 3. Now we are, what are we asked here? We are asked the acceleration components along the point 0, 0, right? So what is the at particular point 0, 0? What does this equation become? It simply becomes y dot is equal to 2 into 0 into x dot. So y dot is equal to 0 at this particular point. So if I, if I plug this into these two equations, so at 0, 0, equation 1 becomes what? x dot square plus y dot square is equal to 1, right? This equation. So if I plug this for this particular point, then I simply end up getting x dot square plus 0 is equal to 1 or x dot square is equal to 1 or x dot is equal to plus minus root over 1 which is again 1. Again, if I also plug in this particular value for equation number 2, let's suppose so equation 2 which is this one becomes x dot x double dot plus y dot y double dot is equal to 0 or I can say what is x dot? x dot at 0, 0 is nothing but plus minus 1. So let me keep it here like this x dot x double dot plus y dot is nothing but 0. So this becomes 0 is equal to 0 or x dot x double dot is equal to 0. Now x dot is not equal to 0, right? If the x dot is not equal to 0, it automatically implies that x double dot is equal to 0. So this is our first answer x double dot is the acceleration component in x axis is 0 meter per second square. Now to obtain the second answer, we can use again this equation that we have y dot is equal to 2x x dot. So y dot is equal to 2x x dot which we obtained from the equation of motion that was given to us here. So if I do a differentiation of this with respect to time again, then this simply becomes y double dot is equal to 2x x double dot plus 2x dot square. All right. So here again, if I plug in the values of let's suppose at uh, 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 some point 0, 0 because that is what we are interested in, y double dot simply becomes 2 into x is nothing but 0, x double dot, what is it? It's again 0 plus 2 into x dot, what is x dot? x dot I have already obtained here, right? x dot is plus minus 1, so x dot square is just equal to 1, then it simply becomes 1 square or y double dot is equal to 2. So this is our final answer a y with the component of acceleration along y axis is equal to 2 meter per second square. So this is the answer we were interested in the component of acceleration along a x and a y axis respectively. So as I just said, uh, you can get questions in different competitive exams regarding these two kinds of particular problems. You are either given the path of motion to find the velocity or acceleration or you are given the velocity or acceleration to find the path of motion. So if you are given the path of motion, you can just do a differentiation with respect to time to obtain the components of velocity and acceleration. If you are given the acceleration and velocity components, you can integrate with respect to time and apply the necessary initial conditions to obtain the equation of motion. So that's it for today. I hope you got some idea of how to solve problems of this nature. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.